My name is Renee Martinez, also known as Mousy, and I'm 30 years old. I've met Mousy once before for our queer life. Yes, Matt, nice to meet you. you. I did not give two fucks about nothing, about nobody, didn't care. And after airing her episode, I heard feedback from strangers who knew her on the streets. Hearing the feedback made me that much more interested in her and her life. What was Mousy's childhood like? Who is her husband, Gio? At its core, I guess I wanted to know what made Mousy who she is today. I was anxious to dive in deep, but was hoping she was ready to go on that journey with me. I'm happy to meet you. I really like the things. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. This is Gio, Mousy's husband. Nice, it's nice and clean in here. Yeah. It looks good. What are some of the charges that you've gotten that you've uh, gotten here in jail before? Burglary and uh, uh, credit fraud. And what is your life now like in terms of all of that? Um, I am actually, I stopped doing all that. You know, scamming other people, I, done, I stopped doing that. Me and her, we both, like, we entertain people. Like, and we have, you know, we still are into that lifestyle of, like, being escorts. So, you know what I mean? I think that's how our, our relationship has gotten a lot more closer because, like, we're more open with, like, a lot of people. But, like, we still are in in it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we know, we let each other know that we have to go and handle business and make money. And stuff, yeah. And, you know. Well, hello, hello, stranger. Sorry. No. No, you look gorgeous. I just started doing my, um, my face stuff. You look different to me. Oh my gosh. Like, you well, look gorgeous. I don't have no, I don't have no, no, no second, uh, it's good to see you. No, I your ego on yet. Okay, I brought you, I brought you cigarettes, so I brought you a bunch okay, of stuff. beautiful. Yes. Um, give me about 10 minutes. Take your time. So if you tell other guys that you're dating a trans woman, like, how, how do they react? Oh, they, they totally look at me as, as, you know, gay. Have you only dated trans people before, or do you date whoever, or what uh, is that? This is my first trans, uh, like, I say real relationship, when uh, guys kind of like, you know, say, hey, dude, hey, 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 you, him, her, or like, you know, instead of her, I kind of like, I jump on the gun, I'm like, dude, you know, like, have some respect you don't see like you know what i mean like it's not a chi it's not a dude it's a chick bro like, yeah you know what i mean like you exactly should, like, you know, realize you know you, you see that how the dress like you know what i mean like you can't just like you know like you put them down because you know with exactly who they're trying to be and then you just like shine them off like you know what i mean that's that's right that, that this there's an ass kick to me my mom told me like you know just you know to the day like you know just love who you, you know what i mean who, who you know is gonna you know yep. be there to the day you know to the end you know what i mean and, and i know for a fact she's gonna be there for to, with me to the end this right here is a um magical serum you put this at your what do they call it that animal crow's feet bird's nest whatever it is that happens yes, right i have those corner. baby as you're applying snatches it like if you're putting your hair on a ponytail and just gives you smoothness all right here. It's from Switzerland. Swiss made it. Of course, not LA, not USA. This is so fun to have both of you guys together in a video. Yes, well, we're visiting from New Zealand. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy to come back, Mousy, because you are just one of the most interesting people I've ever met, and I'm just so happy that you're on my series. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm happy to be part of your series. Where are you from originally? From what my birth certificate says, um, Glendale. I'm Puerto Rican and Filipino, and my family says that um, I was over there when I was young, or I came over here when I was young, I'm not sure. Were you close with your family growing up? It's, it's complicated because I had a lot of tragedy, tragedy, is that the right word? Or trauma at a very young age. I lost my um, father when I was three. Oh, wow. And I lost my mother when I was six. By the time I was about six years old, I had outlived my immediate family. I remember my mother very clearly. She was a gang member. She was getting ready one time for a fight, and I didn't know what it was for, but she was putting, I, back then they had the little bumpets or whatever, the little hair pieces or whatever, and she was putting razor blades, the, the double blade razor blades in it. And I was like, what is this woman doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like young. I'm like, what is going on? Looking at my sister, who was like just a year older than me. She said, get in the car. We got in the car. And me and my sister are looking out the back window. And here comes my mother, like a tornado out of the car. She comes flying out of the car to go and fight this girl. And sure enough, I guess she knew what she was doing. That girl went to grab her hair and got nothing but razor blades. And, and it was... It was a horrific scene, but at the same time, I was like, yay, mom, you did the shit out of that. Like, she saw that coming. So you've always been 
in this lifestyle of gangs. And fast gangs. Fast. Nothing short of fast and wild. Ever since they had both passed, I realized, and something inside my mind and my heart said, sponge everything that you're that you're getting told. You know what I mean? Like just sponge it, save it. You're gonna need it later on. I wish the tragedies didn't happen, but they helped me become the person that I am today. You know, because I found myself at 12 years old in my own hotel room, slinging dope. You know, and and still going to school. I learned how to fight very quickly, very quickly. I just dared for anybody to try it, you know what I mean? I'd already had a chip on my shoulder from tragedies. I was young, I'd already lost my parents, and I knew that I needed to belong to something. I needed to belong to something, I needed to fit in, I needed to be accepted somewhere. So when you were around 12, that's when you started, you said slinging dope and stuff, mm -hmm. and so that's when you started doing like illegal activity. Oh yeah, I call it community service. Well, I didn't start doing community service, prostitution, escort, whatever fancy word they want to call it. Um, I didn't start doing that till I was 19. How was that at 19? How was your first experience? I stumbled across it, which is hilarious. I got out of my first prison term. $200 can only get you so far. That's how much you get when you get out of jail, $200. Yes, and that's, that's, a, that's a joke. You lose absolutely everything when you get arrested, and then you come out to absolutely nothing, and they expect you to be this perfect role model. Not gonna happen. No. So I used to tell them, you know, I hope you have tennis shoes, because it's gonna be a good chase. See, when I see you, you do your job, I'll do mine. The $200 was dwindling. I was out to get my last pack of cigarettes and this dude kept circling the block. And I was like, why does this man keep going around the block? And I was like, oh, he probably wants some dope. And so I finally stopped him and I was like, dude, I'm I don't, like, I don't got nothing, you know what I'm saying? If you, you're being around the wrong bush. And he's like, no, 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 no. I got 400 bucks and says you can't make me not. I said, if you don't unlock this motherfucking door. And I just jumped in the car and proved him wrong. And he handed me the $400 right when I got in the car. And from then on, you realized? That's when I found out I had another addiction, which was prostitution. Because from then on, I was going to be the very best at it. it it's From a distance, sometimes it looks like it's just money, it's cute, and it's, you know, fast. Yeah, that's part of it. But there's also the the part that where it's dead and there's nothing out there and you're trying to make that money and, and, and you gotta pay rent, you you know. There were nights that, that you just walk around all night. Just look, you know, waiting for a John, you know what I mean? I was in North Hollywood and I felt that that was not the scene for a transgender. So I was posing as a female. Wow. Which can get a little dicey, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you're getting picked up by gang members and stuff like that. They, they, um, they don't like being lied to, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that seems like that could get really dangerous. This gentleman picked me up. He wanted some heads, so, you know, dumped him up real quick. He paid me. And then we're driving out of the alley. It was like a little alley uh, off of Lancashire and, and Stag, that area. We come out of the side street, and he goes, let me get my money back. First of all, I'm not Mervyn's, nor am I Kmart. <laughs> No You're returns. not, this is not customer service, yes. you are not about to get nothing back. Right. So I was like, <laughs> no. <laughs> One knife freaks me out, to this day it freaks me out, is the fishing knives. He put the blade to my face so hard, I felt warmth right here. And that was because it had already pierced into my skin and that was my blood dripping down my oh face. Gosh. And I, at that point, it's just do or die. Like, like it's whatever I can do to get out of the situation. But he's not getting this money back. I don't know. You're not, I'm sorry. You're not. I go through all this and then have nothing. You really got me fucked up. I saw my opportunity to get out of the car. Mind you, he's bearing the needle. The man is moving. He comes around the corner and it's Stag and Lancashire. I see my opportunity to jump out the car. We're going about mm, 65. I jump out of the car, but. As I jump out, of, my hair was very long. My hair was about four inches above my knees. As I jump out of the car, I don't know if it was him, the car door, whatever, whatever it was. It was just real bad luck for me. Got caught. So my hair is caught. Now I'm getting drugged down the street. He's driving like a bat out of hell. And I mind you, my legs are burning. And you could just feel the the asphalt, the the the, the street just. It's becoming part of my leg. Like, I want to just scream and just be done with it, but I, I don't know what it was. That, like, they say you get this superhuman strength, or, or you just... You, I mean, it's do or die. I mean, come on now. So he's dragging me. So when he goes to make that left turn on Satakori, something in me said, figure it out, figure it out. I don't remember exactly how, but I know one hand came like this. When he hit that turn, I yanked my hair from that car. I lost... Oh, God. Oh, like this whole 
this whole, like this good patch right here, I lost of hair. And you could just feel like the blood just trickling down. It was horrendous. But at that point, I was just like, I got to get out of this. He's not, I'm not going to let this dude do me like this. I, I looked in the, in the mirror and I was just like, I was floored by, by what I seen. I was just like, this is shit you only see in movies, you know what I mean? And I snatched my hair into a side ponytail after combing like so much of my hair, I lost so much of my hair. And so I just snatched it on a little side maneuver like this, threw a little swoop, covered up some, some bruises I had got, but the only thing I could not cover up was my, my legs. And every time I'd walk, it was like, it was just, it would just have like, like pus and blood, like it was just, it would just seep from my legs. This, this whole thing was just hamburger meat. And, but I needed to make money and it wasn't, and I didn't look at it like, oh, poor little tranny. No, it was that like, bitch, get back out there, make your coin, just be on the lookout for that dude. I'm like any other hustler, you lick your wounds and, and, and I was back out there an hour later.